All right, guys, I'm going to thank you for coming back for another video. I know it has been forever and a day since I have made a video, especially a Corvette video. Um, I apologize, but, you know, again, sometimes that is life. Um, my work is very demanding these days. Uh, I have all kinds of other side projects going on, and uh, sometimes it just it, it, it is too much to record. Um, things just end up turning into much bigger projects when you record things. Um, but I have not forgotten about the C6 Corvette. Um, today I'm going to do a couple quick mods. I'm going to give you guys an overview of what has changed, what is changing, what we're doing today. Okay, first, let's show you guys what has changed. Go ahead and go inside the vehicle. Let's see if we can just miss the pole. So, um, if any guys remember, this is a 2010 Corvette. Uh, you're gonna see a new steering wheel on here. That is right. I switched the steering wheel to a um, 2012 2013 style steering wheel um, direct bolt in um, still trying to find an airbag cover uh, that has the grand sport logo uh, i am not willing to spend 500 plus dollars on an airbag cover um, but the steering wheel itself makes a huge difference um, the leather is a little bit different it's got to wear in a bit still kind of uh, a little bit slippery but you're gonna see the 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 thumb bump outs at the uh, like the two and ten, um, that makes a ton, a ton of difference. So now this is no longer just a standard cobalt steering wheel. Um, I had the radio controls on the right, all those are synced up and working. What I did add was the Bluetooth controls on the left side. Um, everything was already pre-wired with the clock spring. Um, I just have to reprogram these with the um, device that I have behind the radio. Um, so that is mod number one that's been updated. Um, I've only driven it real quick with this in, but um, so far I am loving it compared to what the old one uh, felt like. All right. Mod number two we're actually going to do today. Um, I hate, 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 hate to do this. And you guys are probably going to beat me up over it, but I got to do it. So, since getting these Forge Star wheels, um, I'm not very happy with the offsets. These are basically stock offsets. And you're going to see the wheels do not come out very flush. Um, you know, these are... <laughs> 19 by 12s in the back, 18 by 10s up front. I mean, they got the width, they got the meat. Um, just, you know, the offsets just ain't right. I don't know why um, Forge Star decided to go with stock offsets on these things, but we're gonna be fixing that today um, in a way. I didn't wanna fix it, but um, again, we're gonna do it. So, got a set of uh, 20 millimeter wheel spacers here. Of course, made in China. Um, I forget what brand this is. I got these off of Amazon. Typically, these are like a hundred bucks. Um, I got these as a warehouse return for seventeen dollars. So, why the hell not try them, right? Seventeen bucks. If I don't like them, who cares? I throw them in the trash, or I sell them to somebody. Whatever the case may be. Uh, but you're gonna see these are aluminum, twenty mil wheel, wheel spacers, hub centric. Uh, you see the hub centric rings. Uh, they came with the uh, lug nuts. And I'm hoping I can get these things on without having to uh, grind down my stock studs at all. Uh, but you're going to see these are, you know, all but brand new. You see a little bit of surface rust on the end of those uh, studs, but otherwise. Uh, these things are brand new. So we're going to go ahead and test fit. I'm not going to put the car up on the quick jacks. I'm just going to do one wheel, raise it up, see how much it brings it out. Because guess what? If I don't like it or if it sticks out too much, I think it looks goofy. These things are going in the trash or I'll do a giveaway or sell them or something. I don't know yet. That is that. The other thing that's bugging me since getting this car, this front emblem looks like trash. It is faded. A very common thing. You guys told me, hey Pete, you are never going to get a brand new OEM emblem. And guess what? You're wrong. 
because I got a brand new OEM emblem and it was like 60 bucks directly from GM. So, bada bing. I'm gonna go ahead and put a new front emblem on. We're not doing that on this video. I'm gonna save that. Um, I gotta get the front bumper resprayed. Um, so I don't know if I'm gonna do it before respray or not, but again, brand new OEM emblem. It's got the standoffs or the posts. Um, and the other thing that's been driving me crazy since I got this car, these uh, fender liners, I guess we're gonna call them, this side had a little bit of overspray on it. Um, I cleaned up the overspray, but these are kind of beat up and uh, these don't look very good. That one's not as bad as this one. This one I screwed up. I never told you guys the story about how I ran the car um, into the garage when I first got it. You guys don't see this kind of stuff. So um, I gotta get the front bumper resprayed anyway. But you're gonna see this fender liner. This one is ripped up. And I wanna say this was ripped up when I first got it anyway. Um, and I think that's why I ordered these. But I'm gonna put some new fender liners on. At some point I'm gonna clean up these back ones. I'm gonna hit them with some heat. See if I can get some color back into them. Um, so again, stuff kind of hard to get, but you know, your boy, your boy finds some stuff. We got brand new OEM fender liners. Uh, these things were like 60 bucks a piece, brand new. So I got both sides. Uh, we may go ahead and throw those on today because the car is already going to be up in the air. And that's what we got so far. So that's mainly what the video is going to be about today. So again, not super exciting. Uh, but I do got some exciting things coming up, right? So uh, I'm going to be redoing the brake calipers at some point. I know I've said this in probably three videos now. Uh, I am going to be doing the brake calipers. I just got to get time. What I think I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to do a test fitment on the wheels today. I'm going to keep the car in the air without the wheels. Number one, because I want to do the brake calipers as soon as it gets a little bit warmer. And number two, the most important fun thing is... I got a set of long two headers and an X-plate. I know I've been telling you guys for a while, I've been looking for deals, looking for deals, bought a couple sets, um, and then I, you know, just stuff happened with the deals. Um, either they weren't what was expected or, you know, just things happen. Found another deal, found a crazy deal, crazy, crazy deal. Uh, I'm hoping it works out. Still waiting on them to come in, but the, the deal was pretty crazy. So I got a set of brand new American Racing headers, um, American Racing catted X-Pipe. Um, they're only inch and three quarters. However, um, I don't know what the plans are for the course. I don't know if inch and seven eighths or two inches are even needed. Um, it's gotta be a street car. And at the end of the day, if I'm giving up, you know, three wheel horsepower, five wheel horsepower, something like that, it's not that big of a deal. They're still gonna scale with the build. I just may be a couple horsepower down. Um, so those are going to be coming in the very near future. And after that, I figure I might as well get a tune. Um, I don't need to get a tune. I, I want to stop this fallacy. You do not need to get a tune when you get long tube headers. Your car and PCM does not care what exhaust you have. I'm choosing to get a tune because I already have a cold air. I'm going to have the headers, the exhaust. I want to optimize and get a little bit extra horsepower, squeak a little bit extra timing out of it, and maybe get rid of the skip shift and a couple other little uh, features that they can kind of tune out. So again, I'm not doing this because I have to, I'm going to do it because I want to. Um, so that may be coming in the future along with the dyno video. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to at least get the rear up. I'm going to get a rear wheel on, kind of set it down. I want to make sure, number one, I don't have to grind down my studs. Uh, number two, I want to make sure the wheels don't stick out too far to where they look goofy. Right now, it looks good. I just I need a little bit, um, but I got to make sure I'm not putting my fenders in jeopardy either. The car is not low, but um, you have to take into consideration. You can't have your wheels stick out past your fenders and then hit a, a pothole and then you're cracking fiberglass. That's a no-no. I'd rather have them sunk in than, than put my fenders in jeopardy. Uh, so let's go ahead. I think I have a floor jack. Yes, I have a floor jack. Hopefully it still works. I haven't used a floor jack in probably five years. Uh, we'll go ahead and get the car up, take off one of the wheels, do a test fitment, and we'll be back shortly. And this, boys, is why I don't use floor jacks anymore. Look at that. That puck is right on. And you're going to see this thing is just barely 
touching <laughs> my side skirt. So um, I'm gonna give it a quick try, but I might have to put this thing up on the quick jacks. The jack just barely cleared. And actually, now that I look at the cutouts for the wheels, I think these wheel spacers are going to fit fine without having to grind anything out. And I'll show you guys in a minute once I get these off, but uh, these are very open recesses. So it's almost like Forge Star figured, hey, everybody's gonna use wheel spacers for these things because we didn't do a more aggressive fitment. So let's at least make it easy for these people. We shall find out in a minute. So let's get the wheel off, holy shit. I forgot how big these things are. And let me show you guys these recesses. So you're gonna see, I think that is everything I need. Let me go ahead and grab one of those wheel spacers quick and make sure. Hopefully y'all can see that. Let's see. All right, there should be plenty of recess in there. Yes, that just barely clears. I always forget that I got this nice Milwaukee light. All right, so you're gonna see that thing fits on there nice and flush, no issues. Uh, we'll go ahead and tighten that down and we'll do a test fit on the wheel. All right, and I also want to add this in here for any Corvette guys that may be thinking about doing spacers. You're going to see I don't have them on my hubs, uh, on my rotors right now, but there's actually, um, you can see an indentation, I think, from where it was on there. Typically, the Corvettes actually have um, rotor retention clips or like a, um, like a little metal clip, right? It's just a retainer clip that goes on one of the studs to hold the rotor in place. I don't have them on, there's a reason. Um, if you're ever doing wheel spacers, take them off. Uh, if you're doing wheels, you probably wanna take them off anyway, that's why they're off, but they will actually cause those spacers to not sit flush. So keep an eye out for that if you guys are installing these. All right, so I got the spacer um, tightened down enough. Enough. I don't have a torque wrench right now. Uh, I was gonna go out and actually get one today. Um, but, uh, you want to have those torqued down to like 120, 140 foot pounds. Um, again, I'm not planning on driving the car with it, but typically I don't torque those things down. I just torque them enough, right? So don't give me shit about that. It's just the way it goes. Uh, but let's go ahead and mount up a wheel. All right. It's a lot easier when you can sit down and do this because you can kind of hold up the wheels with your feet um, but again when you're recording these are the things that uh, cause recording to take longer because you're trying to get a decent shot which I have no clue what the shot even looks like right now but you're more worried about getting a decent shot than getting the actual project done so um, I just went up a smidge on the jack that helped a little bit as well and then you're going to see I'm holding my feet underneath the bottom of the wheel just to get these started. And because I have the hub centric rings, everything will hold on there fine. But what you'll see is when I drop the camera, what you're going to see is that gap that I was talking about there for those uh studs to pass so if true for or tr sorry true for forge star uh did not figure that out and do that ahead of time um i would have been trimming off the edge of my studs so uh let me go ahead and get these tightened up get it down on the floor and see what it looks like all right so the suspension isn't settled yet but hopefully this gives a decent angle um it's kind of hard to tell because the car is so high, but um, it did certainly bring these things out. All right, so we're going to go with my Ghetto Fabulous stuff. Um, let's see, again, because my level is not tall enough. 
but this piece of molding is indeed level and if you guys can see we got you know it's a couple millimeters maybe two millimeters past the fender uh, from the edge of the tires we put the second wheel spacer on you see we got the wheel off i already got the hub center ring in the wheel and man those brake calipers look disgusting all right that's good go ahead and just get the nuts started and then we'll center the spacer with one of the nuts once the uh tapered end seats there we go now let's see that so that's a nice part about having the hub centric uh hub centric hubs is because you get that nice positive click when they go into place I made an executive decision i am not going to drive the car um, until i can torque these down properly i.e have my son come out to the garage and step on the foot brake to uh, properly torque these but i can at least test fit them and verify fitment so we'll do that um, and we'll just show you guys what the car looks like on the floor and then uh, let the weight settle All right, so we did run into uh, Our first snag. I am gonna have to trim the front uh, studs uh, these Recesses are not as deep on the front wheels obviously because of the offset difference uh, they built the hub a little bit different so They're not going to fit. Uh, I am gonna have to cut off the tips of these nubs uh, to be able to get them to you see my finger tips of these nubs to be able to get them to fit guys It is about a week later. Uh -huh. We got the cutoff wheel out. I got the wheel studs marked I don't want to do it, but I guess I'm gonna have to do it. So uh, I went ahead and, and marked off small sections on these studs uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take off just the tips about half of the tip on those stubs um, And do some test fitment and see how the wheels go All right there's nothing to All right, I'm just at the point where I did the cleanup on the studs and I'm just hand tightening the nuts uh, just to do a test fitment on one of the front wheels to see if I took off enough meat. Uh, I think I did because it didn't need a ton of clearance. Uh, I may just have to level these out a little bit, but uh, let's see how it goes. All right, I think these are pretty much dead on. Uh, they look to be sitting in there perfectly. I may just trim a little teeny, teeny, teeny bit off just for good measure, uh, but we are rocking and rolling, so uh, I'll go ahead and do the other side. So before I get beat up too bad in the comments for ruining my car, just so you guys can see, get an idea, this is how much I took off. It was literally not much, uh, a millimeter or so. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and clean these up. Um, if you can see, it was a little uneven just because of the uh, amount of space that I had with that big cutoff wheel. Uh, I may go ahead and clean that up a little bit more with the Dremel, um, but this did the trick. So let's go ahead and just do clean up. All right. So about a week later, I'm getting ready to get the car on the ground. Um, not because I'm done, but because in typical PM performance fashion, um, <laughs> I got four or five different projects lined up at any given time. So 
you're gonna see some tape on the floor. There's a reason I'm getting the car down today. If anybody can guess what that tape is for, um, I don't know what I'll do yet, but <laughs> tape is there for a reason. We got a vanity here. We're getting ready to do a bathroom remodel. Uh, we got, what do we got in here? I don't know. Looks like we got an intake and some headers. Uh, I'm actually selling that intake. I don't need that intake. Thing is brand new. It's going to be another thing for another day. But, um, we got to get some stuff cleaned up. I got, uh, J channels that I was doing for outdoor lighting. I got some pond stuff going on. I got some other lighting stuff going on. Again, my garage always ends up in some kind of catastrophe at any given time as soon as I clean this up. But most importantly, getting the wheels back on the car today. Um, tighten down the wheel spacers. Uh, my wife helped me out with that. I'm going to keep the, the wheel liners out of here because I got the wheel liners out. Again, I'm not ready to put everything all back together because I want to get fog lights. Um, but my budget changed a little bit because of what you're going to see in the next couple videos. So let me get this thing down on the ground. I'm going to run out, do some errands. I'm going to let it settle. And then uh, I'll let you guys get a final on uh, what the wheels look like once they're spaced out. And then we're going to move on to the next video. All right. So I just literally pulled the car off of the quick jacks. Uh, suspension has not had time to settle yet, but... I'm not gonna lie, I don't hate it. I don't hate it one bit. Uh, it's looking like a Corvette should look now. I don't know if you can kind of see down the back. So once it settles, it'll settle maybe another quarter of an inch or something. But now, now my friends, this is looking all right. This is looking all right. I'm kind of worried about how much more I'm gonna pepper up my fenders because you're gonna... all right so yeah I'm worried if I'm gonna be peppering up my fenders um, then fronts if you look at the fronts because of the curvature of the car um, obviously that sticks out quite a bit more now so uh, with a sticky tire I'm gonna be slinging a lot more stuff up the side of the car but 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 she's looking good all right guys i didn't want to leave you astray with just pictures in my driveway so i took the car around the block real quick uh let the suspension settle tested a very extreme very extreme exit out of my driveway as you guys already know if you follow my driveway is terrible uh for owning a corvette or a lowered car so i went super super extreme and things just clear i don't know the fender liners in right now but i'll go ahead and post some pictures um at the end for some b-roll footage showing what it looks like uh absolutely full tilt um with the clearance in the front wind fender wells as well as the rears but um again it is just perfectly flush now things are looking good um i often said that this car looked like an old person that didn't have their dentures in before because the way the wheels sunk in um even the aftermarket wheels they still sunk in a good bit so um now she looks like she's got her dentures in and uh she's looking good so there's kind of the angle you get with the curvature of the car um but everything everything is looking good so uh we'll go ahead and finish this one up stay tuned guys again i got a number of new things coming uh, so stay tuned for the next couple videos it may be a little interesting um, and then uh, we'll see if I can start getting back to the channel keeping up with it as uh, now I'm doing a little bit more interesting things in life thank you guys and I uh, will catch you on the next one mm -hmm.